Well, welcome back to another analysis behind the news this week. This week I'm going to do it a little different because I'm weighing in on the Confederate battle flag issue. And uh, I'm, I'm going to read it rather than just sit here impromptu as I normally do. We just grab some stuff and I come sit down and start talking. But I don't want anything to be misconstrued as to what I'm going to say on that issue and a couple of others. So I'm going to be reading it this time instead of just doing it extemporaneously. Uh, frankly, I'm not one of those who have a passion about the flag uh, specifically. I view the entire episode of the conspiracy-induced fraction and then conflict of a civil war with sadness. Both from the standpoint of the tremendous loss of life and wealth and from the fact that the colossal ignorance of the American people in both the North and South as to what actually caused the war. It's nice that slavery ended, but it could have been handled much better and would probably have ended much sooner had certain forces not used the issue of abolition as a source of agitation rather than as a remedy. The Civil War was contrived by a conspiracy so monstrous whose intent was to alter the American system and society to prepare for a draconian government ruled by them. They did not care how many lives it took, how much property was destroyed, how much wealth was expended, and how many lies had to be told. This conspiracy operated in both sections of the country, and in both the Union and the Confederacy, and they both moved their sections toward socialism albeit it was harder to do in the South than it was in the North. The regret is how Northerners and Southerners were duped by these people into the process. My forthcoming book, To the Victor Goes the Myths and Monuments, will tell the story as no other book published to date. In the midst of the war, heroes emerged as well as vill villains on both sides. These heroes need to be remembered. There was valor and honor in the midst of the conspiracy-induced tragedy. The issue was not slavery, or the economics of the day, or how many battles were fought and who won and who lost. Much has been hidden from the history of this time, and there's been a systematic purge of that history. Indeed, this purging of history had been going on for a long time by the capture of publishing houses, textbooks, schools, uh, historical societies, etc., by this conspiracy. The removal of the Confederate flag is only the latest manifestation of this purge, and the political correctness police have done their job well. This visible purging of history, as opposed to the invisible, a manifestation of something more sinister, and goes well beyond the losing of the Bill of Rights. It is the destruction of our heritage, both good and ill, to set the stage for a greater evil. The conspiracy of men who intend to rule us as part of their New World Order have, as stated, been expunging history to fit their agenda for a very long time, removing vital information Americans need to know. Karl Marx said it this way when he penned, quote, A people without a heritage are easily persuaded, unquote. The communists have been part of this conspiracy to remove our heritage through the tactic of creating and preserving ignorance. Just a few highlights of historical events that have been altered or expunged to fit a storyline and move their agenda forward are Pearl Harbor, the Gulf of Tonkin incident, in fact the whole Vietnam War, the reality of the United Nations and its goals, why there are more homosexuals percentage-wise today than any time in world history, the 9-11 attack relative to prior events leading up to the attack, and the latest being the attack on our embassy in Benghazi. We have written about all of these incidences and tried to set the record straight in the pages of our magazine, The New American, except for the homosexual aspect. Frankly, ladies and gentlemen, it is the schools that are producing the homosexuals, and in most cases, the teachers don't even realize that's what they're doing. 
It has to do with sex education and its misapplication before a certain age, during impressionable ages. I can't even discuss it in polite company because of the detailed explanation that it takes. Frankly, these events that I just went through pale compared to the twists and turns in civics and history in the schools relative to the founders of our country, the Constitution, the religious foundation of the American system, who the traditional enemies of the United States were up to the start of World War I, the history of communist influence in the United States, starting with the Jacobin upheaval just after the ratification of the Constitution, etc. I will briefly discuss this problem in the foreword of the next two John Birch Society bulletins. The eradication of the Confederate battle flag follows in the step, footsteps of the eradication of the Ten Commandments from public buildings and other religious icons. Now, you may not think these two are related, but they really are. They're part of a much larger program of eradicating our history and our heritage. When you study the entire picture of what's going on, these items become interrelated. Now, it's time for those who are concerned about this round of political correctness to look around and study how you may have been misled about other matters that have escaped your notice. And we're not interested in what these people do with the Confederate flag, whether they're racist or not racist, just remembering the South, whatever. I mean, there is even a call today by a small group of radical Americans trying to get rid of the American flag, not just the Confederate flag, the American flag as a symbol of racism. Where does this stop? And then when you find out these other things that you may not have known about or noticed, then it's time for you to not just take note, but to get involved in saving what's left of our country and the freedom of speech, the freedom of religion, and all the other Bill of Rights. Get involved and do something about it. Don't just talk about it. Until next week, we'll see you then.